I'm filming your dog. <laughs> Is it signed a release form? Oh, Mark. So, incarnation today, car we've been really looking forward to driving. The Porsche Cayman 982 GT4. This one's special, PDK. Sorry, GT4's only come in manual. That's what a lot of people say. This is the 2021 version, PDK, not many on the road. Uh, I've driven the manuals on track and on road, so I've got a good comparison, and that's something we're gonna look at today. But I think the question is, it's a big question. What's that? Is this the world's best sports car? That's a big question. It's All like I wanna know is, is it as good as the GT3 we tested? Which I think yeah. was the world's best sports car. Let's find out. We're on the same roads. Okay, let's try it. I like the wing. Is it the world's best sports car? As in reasonably attainable. Reasonably attainable, you know, Gallant leaving aside yeah. million dollar Ferraris. And when I say the world's best sports car, I guess that means previous prior to this, the GT3 was the world's best sports car, wasn't it? Well, I, Let's I, find it out. might still be. It might still be. 2021 982. 982, otherwise known as a 718. I know Porsche is very confusing with its numbers. It's very confusing. So let's go through it now while we're running along here. The first came in, that came out was the 987. I own one of those in manual. They came out in 2006. Then they went to the 981, which lasted from 2011 to 2015. 2016, they brought out the 718 Cayman, and it had the turbo motor, the unloved turbo motor. Uh, now, thankfully, as we know, with the GT4 and the GT3, normally aspirated cars, there are about 56 cars in the Porsche range, of which about 54 of them have turbochargers. The GT4 doesn't, and the GT3 doesn't. That's right. They realised that people wanted that screaming flat six, and that's what they got. That's what people want. Yep. It just has the sound, and, and this car is the same. It has such an amazing sound. Oh, look, it's an automatic. It's not really an automatic, Stu. It's a PDK, and they're very different animals. So it's not an old slush box, Tiptronic. No. Add more slush. No. Right now, we're cruising along it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that took me by surprise. Yeah, Boy, doesn't that change the character out. all of a sudden? It changes character when you, even over about 4,000 revs, it really changes character. Yeah. Because below and at idle, it's a little bit, yeah, not that notable. We'll get to the whole manual versus PDK yeah, thing later. We will. One of the things I like about the Cayman is the size of the car, just the dimensions of the car. Yep. When you look at a current GT3 against uh, the original 996 GT3 Porsche, it's a giant car. It yep. looks like it's twice the size, yep. and it's almost getting to be too big. And when I asked that question about what's the world's best sports car, for me, a sports car has to be on the smaller side. I don't want a big lumbering car. I want a small car that's got good dimensions that you can throw around tight corners really quickly, kind of like a Lotus. I'm a bit of a Lotus fan, yep. that sort of feel. And for me, this car has that. You'd never call a GT3 lumbering, though, would you? That's, that's no. a terrible misuse of the word. <laughs> and here's where the first strange dichotomy arises. In your hands, this car does drive like a smaller car than the 991 GT3 that we tested. It feels lighter, even more nimble. And while it is slightly shorter, about 160 mil or six inches, if you include the mirrors, it's actually slightly wider and taller and the wheelbase is actually longer than the GT3, and it weighs more. Now that is a surprise. It is. Yeah. Brakes are good. Brakes are impressive. This car just has the steel rotors, not the uh, ceramics. You look on road, it makes no difference. It really doesn't. It does change character, doesn't it? It really does. I noticed the motor, the GT3 motor was just the best motor ever. It was four litre flat six. Yeah. This is also a four litre flat six, but it's a completely different motor. Very different characteristics. This is based on the three litre turbo motor in the in the Carreras, yeah. but threw away the turbos, increased the capacity, and it's quite a different feel, isn't it? It, it doesn't have that super hard edge at seven grand that the GT3 does. It does have a different note, doesn't it? It doesn't have that pure punch that the GT3 has. And you really 
really do have to rev it. Tight, twisty roads like this. This is where you see the dimensions of the car coming to the fore. You really can actually commit a little bit more with this car. That's a bumpy piece of road there. Right, it's the, da great. the dampers are superb, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. So, um, and so we're running on, on the harder setting, we're running on the, on the stiff chassis setting. Mm -hmm. And that is actually superb. So the whole front end is out of the GT3. Correct. So they didn't they didn't cut any corners for this. But guess what? We've got news for you. If you do want to go on the track, this is the gearbox you want. Yeah, definitely. One of the reasons why you want this on, on the track is it's the shifts are just so quick. No one can shift a manual transmission as quick as this is going to shift. Yep. And for me as a driver, the benefit of a PDK transmission is uh, you can left foot brake on the track. And I always left foot brake. Uh, for me, there's a lot of advantages there in the way you brake, the feel of your foot on the brake, the weight transfer control. You can brake a little bit later. That's funny how it's all turned around. It used to be your automatic car for the weekend and your manual car for the track. Yeah. Now it's the other way around. It is, yeah. With the PDK, the engine just sings a bit better. Uh, I think you can get up through the ratios a little yep. more quickly. And here's where the second contradiction arises. The six-speed manual gearbox is rightly criticised for the, for the long ratios that Porsche says it couldn't fix, particularly second gear, which can run all the way to about 135 kilometres per hour, way over the national limit. The seven-speed PDK just feels so much better, but the truth is second gear in the PDK is only slightly shorter than the manual car and will still take you to 120 k's an hour or more. And yet the PDK always seems to be in the right gear at the right time. It just feels better suited to the car. Go figure. Notwithstanding the fact that 0 to 100 in the manual car, 4.3, and in this car, 3.7, more than half a second quicker. That's significant, isn't it? Yeah. On the track, the manual car, second gear, is too long. It's the one failing in the car. Oh, that was only about 7,000 revs there. Oh, boy. So, you've got a bit more to go, and it really sings there, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm surprised how loud it is yeah. when you get onto it. And we've got some uh, some engine notes pumped into the, the cabin, I believe, through the engine bay. But it's not a, a synthetic noise, it's just the noise of the engine, which is yep. a really clever innovation from Porsche. Yeah. Oh, that's opened it up. That's watered it up a little. Oh, that sounds like a GT3. Dip there. I'm just really impressed with Suspension. how the dampers are, are handling this road. It is yeah. so solid. Hey, how good are the seats? Well, these are the comfort seats. They're not the big, uh, flashy carbon bucket seats that everyone likes to have. You don't need them. And when you look at these seats, they don't look that great, but for me, they're absolutely superb. And you do not feel any lateral movement at all. You, you could have these seats in a car on the racetrack and no problem at all. If you want to take on a 1000k road trip, you do want to get out of the car feeling comfortable yeah. at the end. Which means it's nice to have some adjustment. You can go, I'm going to lie down a little bit. I'm going to sit up a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to relax and play with the stereo. The electric power steering on this car is superb. Yeah. The, weight of, the weight is excellent. You get really good feedback through the tyres. You can still feel what's going on at the tyre and you can adjust the steering wheel. If you feel it pushed a bit too hard and it's understeering and, or oversteering for that matter, you can instantly feel what's going on. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking as a Cayman owner, but my car compared to this is, is chalk and cheese, I'm afraid. It is, yeah. It's 15-year-old technology and, and this thing is just a weapon. Porsche have come so far in that period of even the last 10 years. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like about Porsche, generally with Porsche cars, very easy to switch between modes. So we're just in standard auto mode, it's in sixth gear. If we want to go PDK Sport, immediately drops down to third, we'll open the exhaust. Very easy to do on the fly. You don't have to go hunting through a screen to, to make changes. It's got auto stop as well. We won't use that. Nah, we don't need that. <sighs> Little breather. That's good, isn't it? Very good. What a car. What do you think? Okay. What yeah. have we got? 20 inch wheels? Yep. Steel brakes. GT Silver. Scoops are a bit bigger. Uh, look at the wing. Mate, you get two for the price of one. Very similar, a little different here. Subtle differences, Stu, but enough to make a performance difference. Certainly that's going to work for you on the track, maybe not in our drive today. But yeah, outwardly very similar to the previous car. Mirrors, 
similar to GT3 I believe, the uh, GT4 splitter. It's a little deeper, a little bigger. It's a bit less harsh than the GT3 isn't it? Even, even just driving around on the road I think it's a bit more compliant. It's quiet. It's an everyday road car. It's actually very sedate. So we're just in auto mode there. The car is very nice to drive in auto. It just shifts really quickly. Like those shifts are seamless, aren't they? Absolutely. If I didn't hear them, I, I couldn't feel them at all. No. Not, the e not even the faintest little shimmer. Yeah. I'm going to open up the baffles as well. That's the howl button. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Wanting to push on a bit and just drive in auto and not worry about the flappy paddles, you can do that. And this car, the transmission is so clever, it's going to do that beautifully. If you want to buy any GT4, I only found six for sale in Australia. Two of the older 981 GT4s, which were the 3.8 litre, and they were both manuals. The new ones, about a quarter of a million dollars, I found four of them. Two new and two almost new, all of the manuals. Why are the new ones cheaper than the, the two-year-old ones? They've obviously ticked some, uh, ticked some option boxes, haven't they? I haven't seen a single one with PDK for sale. Very unusual. So who are we thanking today for the use of this amazing car? Uh, this is my old friend Warwick. I've known Warwick for pretty over 20 years. I've done a lot of driver coaching with him. And he's a huge driving enthusiast with a really nice collection of cars. And but this one is his road car. This is, the road this car. is his daily driver. Yeah, absolutely. Sports Chrono, the 982, the, the tech and the, uh, the connectivity is, I understand, better than the previous model. But really, who cares? So we tend not to focus on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Suffice to say, it's got a pleasant little screen that doesn't look like a tack-on iPad that's yeah. been whacked on the gash. That's right. One of the things I like is this lovely steering wheel. No buttons, no yeah. volume for radios, nothing. no cruise control. Absolutely It's just nothing. a beautiful steering wheel, just like you want in a race car. A couple of paddles hanging on the back of it, obviously. Unadorned. Uh, I like that. Just like the $49 one you can buy in super cheap auto? Not quite. <laughs> What's wrong with this car? You've got to watch out for speed bumps and dips and things. That, that splitter is quite low. It is, but luckily it's plastic and not carbon fibre. Uh -huh. So uh, if you do wreck one, it's not, uh, you know, hey, I've got to sell my house to, uh, yeah. to buy a new one like it is with some other cars when you do that. It's a consumable. We're on 20 inch wheels with 295s on the back. They're Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Oh. Oh, did you hear me turn it into howl mode then? Yep. We picked a limiter. Yeah. Finally, we, we found a limiter. It doesn't get up there quite as quickly as the GT3, no. does it? I mean, no. I just you know recall with the GT3 when you're looking at the Taco, it's, it's like a motorbike Taco. The GT3 had different modes. At five grand, it comes alive, and at seven grand, it goes nuts. This one is just linear and progressive all the way. And it doesn't flatten out. Yep. It's really all the way to just under eight grand. Baffles open, window down, driver ready, passenger ready. <laughs> Impressive, isn't it, Stu? I don't know what to say. Yeah, look. Like it's a very different engine to the GT3. Yeah. You can't say it's worse, it's just different. It's absolutely amazing. It's, uh, the term I'd use for the GT4 is ballistic, and the GT3 is feral. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Is How it? do they do it? How does Porsche keep building normally aspirated motors that are just that good? All right, I admit it. It's got more personality than my electric whatever I get next. Okay. The brakes are superb. Are they? No chatter at all there. Oh, I can feel a little bit of traction control there. Just a little bit. You've just got that confidence with Porsche brakes. You're back on the gas. The car, the back of the car is just so stable. Unbelievable. Considering how chattery this road is. It's not an ideal road, is it? No. It, I can't this believe car, the grip you're getting on that. I mean, we've still got the uh, TC on, the stability control on, and that's really hardly intervening at all, is it? Yep. Would you turn the traction control off? Would you turn the stability control off on this car? Yep. No. 
just no. leave it on. Yeah. That's your insurance factor right there. Yeah. It's at such a high threshold. Oh. You can drive really hard. I, I would be leaving that on all the time. But so the stability of the car wow. is just sensational, it isn't is. it? The back of the car is not breaking out. The front turns in beautifully. The EPC electric power steering on the, on the GT4 is just sensational. The weight is beautiful. To me, that's the characteristics of a good sports car, isn't it? It shrinks around. You feel part of this car. You're very connected to everything it's doing. It doesn't feel daunting at all. Even a GT3 when it's on full song is a, is a little bit daunting in some ways. Mm. And uh, they are the elements of what make a brilliant sports car in my opinion. Yep. It's really fast. It's, it's over 300 kilometres an hour. It's, it's a, for, for a small car. You need a lot of straight to get that. <laughs> You're probably talking more sound straight, but yeah. um, it will do it. If it had another 100 horsepower, I don't think it would be as good to drive. I think it would turn what is a beautifully balanced car into something that became um, a little bit daunting and unwieldy to drive. Performance, we gave the GT3 a 5. I cannot give this any less than a 5. You really can't, can you? Presentation, same. It's stunning. Yeah. Personality, same. Practicality, slightly better. Yeah. You can actually fit quite a lot of stuff in the back as well as the front. Yeah. So what's our score? Uh, well, as you can see on the scale, it's cracked 20. It's over 20, very few cars do that. The big question is PDK or manual? I would not hesitate in getting PDK no, instead absolutely. of manual for this car. If you're an enthusiast, a purist, you'd probably go for the manual. Fabulous car, sunny day. Having fun, Mark? Awesome, how could you not have fun driving this? The only person who's not having fun today is the owner of this car, <laughs> who's at home not driving it. That's right. Warwick, so, thank you very much for sharing your uh, Cayman GT4 with us today. We've had a great time. Thank you, Warwick. That was exciting. It was good, wasn't it? Very good. All right, what's the answer to your question? Well, what was the question? Is this the best sports car ever? As in, affordable. It's semi, semi affordable. I think this car is utterly astonishing. It's just impressive on every level, and I don't think you can fault the car. Yep. I think it is the best sports car in the world. It's not the fastest, but I think it's the best sports car in the world. For me, it was the grip on the rough surface down there. I could not believe how it didn't skip about. It was just perfect. I still got a thing for the GT3 because it's so it's off brilliant. the scale nuts. Yeah. But as a practical day-to-day -day sports car, you could not ask for more. Just a couple of points to resolve. Mark believes the manual gearbox in the Cayman is the world's sweetest gearbox. So there's no wrong choice there. PDK or manual, both brilliant. Now the GT4 versus GT3 question. For some people, this is a no-brainer. It has to be a GT3. That's fine. Or a GT3 RS, which would not be so well suited to the roads we were on today. RSs belong on the track. But I agree with Mark that on the road, a GT3 is probably still too much car for most enthusiast drivers. If you try to exploit its full potential on the road, you better know what you're doing. And if you're thinking about turning off the stability management, yeah, nah, don't do that. The only other point of difference is the presence of a back seat in some GT3s which you know you're never going to use for grown-ups. My suggestion? Get one. Get a GT4 with the comfort seats. If you haven't got a quarter of a million dollars, then just go for an older base model 981 or even an old 987 Gen 2. Doesn't matter. Just get one. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed it. We've had a great day and uh, we'll see you soon. See you next week. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.